I'm Stephen Bentonoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. It's been 25 days since Protective Edge started. Israel's campaign in order to wipe out Hamas terrorist infrastructure in Gaza, a terrorist group that is bent on the destruction of Israel, along with Israel's neighbors as well, such as Iran, Hezbollah, also the Syrians, ISIS, and many others, even the Palestinian Authority. It seems like there's not a single neighbor that Israel has that does not want its total destruction and annihilation. And here lately, we've been actually having some interesting news here in America. While we're here in America, of course, the United States media, especially CNN News and some others that have really been against Israel in this campaign, siding with Hamas, siding with the, uh, the Obama administration, basically as if they were pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian uh, Arabs in this case here. But some, other, some have come to, to, to the defense of Israel, such as Steve Molsberg with Newsmax, as we reported just the other day. And even Fox News, and seeing some of those stand up with Fox News on Fox News Radio, as well as uh, on the news report itself. Israel does need some unbiased reporting. It is a tragedy, and it is indeed sad to see that children are killed in a battle such as this. But as Israel often points out, Hamas does bear that responsibility. Because many times what we don't see in the background, when the fighting is going on, the Hamas will not let its citizens evacuate. In fact, they're made to stay because they want the death toll to increase. Unlike the Israelis. In fact, today when I was on Fox News, I happened to be a call, I was on a call-in program on Fox News. I didn't get the chance to really say what I wanted to say, but the, the host there, uh, Drew Steele, was very kind. Allowing, us, allowing me to come on have some of the say that I, I wanted to speak about in, in defense of Israel. But the one thing I wanted to bring up, because oftentimes we find that the world that is against Israel and basically comparing the Israelis like into Nazi Germany, they totally forget when you think about the men, women, and children, the civilians that are killed in such, uh, such uh, situations that we have in Gaza, we often forget about battles such as World War II. Hitler, as evil as he was. But what did Churchill do? What did he do to the capital of Germany, along with the United States, when they did a three-day bombing campaign and leveled an entire city? They weren't worried about the men, women, or children that were in there that were not soldiers. They just felt like that this would bring Hitler to his knees to wipe out everything and everyone. Or much like America when we went to war with Iraq to liberate Kuwait. Or was it to liberate the oil fields? Well, there's a lot of debate on that as well. But nonetheless, the United States tried desperately not to kill children, taking pinpointing strategic places. But did the United States do like Israel does? Did the U.S. take and call each target up and let the people that were in there know that they were about to be attacked or bombed? Now, the U.S. did do like Israel does as far as dropping leaflets to let the people know it was their time to get out. But in Israel's case, they actually call ahead to those people that are the occupants of the building to let them know that there's going to be a bombing run. So Israel really goes to an extra length. But when it comes to that campaign on the ground, there are innocent lives that will be lost. Innocent lives because Hamas is bent on making sure that they're in the front part of the battle. Hamas is making sure that if they can grab a child up in their arms while they shoot back at the Israelis, they will do so, hoping the Israelis will not fire back. There are many missions that are aborted by Israelis for fear of the loss of life of innocent civilians. But unfortunately, in a war like this, in such a densely populated area, you can only do so much. I'd like to take today, tonight, though, on this Sabbath Eve, and to remember the families of those that died in battle. The 61 soldiers, Israeli soldiers, that have been, that have been killed during this battle with Hamas, a terrorist organization, who is still bent on the destruction of Israel and the killing of innocent lives. Whereas Israel has purposely tried to avoid it the best they know how, 
Hamas is still bent not on attacking the soldiers of Israel, but rather the civilians of Israel. In the latest mortar fire, there were five soldiers that were killed in Israel just the other day. One was Master Sergeant Daniel Marsh. Another was Cap Captain Omri Tao. Sir Sergeant First Class Shai Kushner was also killed in this battle, as well as Master Sergeant Noam Rosenthal. Captain Laurine Adari was killed in the battle. And of course, the one kidnapped soldier that we should all need to be praying for, and that's Second Lieutenant Hadar Golden, who was kidnapped during a heavy gun battle inside of Gaza, where two of his comrades were killed as well. Please take the time to remember them and their families, as well as the other 61 soldiers that have died in the battle. Total, that is, 61 soldiers that have died thus far. Israel is paying a heavy toll in order to try to keep their country safe. It is a big price to pay. And I ask you to remember them today. Baruch Hashem.